Welcome everyone to my next Let's Play. So, for everyone that watched my Tecmo Bowl videos, I certainly hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, for this one, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to do something else. So, I recently came into possession of a computer that has a version of Windows on it that predates Windows 7. So now I can play all my old computer games. And if you can hear that fan in the background, that's it. It's a big monster and the fan runs constantly. So I'm going to be doing a game called the Yukon Trail. It's from a company called Mech. They're the ones that made the Oregon Trail. I'm sure everybody's probably heard of and played the Oregon Trail, and it's awesome. The Yukon Trail was a little lesser-known game. And I can remember when I was a kid, the first computer I ever got, uh, I got it in 1994. Good old Windows 3.1. I was at Best Buy one day with my family, and we just... I happen to be looking around at the computer games and I noticed I was actually looking for the Oregon Trail and when I found it there was the Yukon Trail right there next to it and I remember reading on the box that uh, if you buy the Yukon Trail that the Oregon Trail is free there was a copy of it inside the box with the Yukon Trail so I was like wow that's awesome two games for one so I got the Yukon Trail and it is very different from the Oregon Trail. It uh, They really went for the educational factor for this game. They tried to kind of give you the feel of uh, somebody that was actually going to go to the Yukon and mine for for uh, gold. Uh, I'll get into the game here. Let's go ahead and get started. I have an idea of what I'm talking about. This is not the best game in the world, but it was a neat idea. This here's the Yukon Trail, another exciting product from Mech. July 1897. The United States was in the throes of a depression. Times were tough, and people were beginning to lose hope. Then, from out of the North, came astonishing news. Gold. And the rush was on. Across the United States, and indeed the world, tens of thousands of people caught gold fever and set out for the remote Yukon area of Northwest Canada. For all who took part, it would be the adventure of a lifetime. Yep, I've been prospecting all my life, and i never seen nothing like it. The rivers are full of gold. But if you want to strike it rich, you better hurry. Claims are being snapped up faster than greased lightning. Hot off the presses, read all about it. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to get started. Okay, I think I spelled that right. Yeah, my setup's a little weird. I don't ever plan on hooking this computer up to the internet, ever. So, Fraps is pretty much out of the question, so my setup is a little funky, but it'll work. It just kind of, the, uh, the output to the TV that I'm using, uh, the formats don't exactly translate over perfectly, so what I'm looking at right in front of me is a little bit blurry, but anyway, it'll work. Alright, so, we have a journal. And it gives us the date that we arrived in Seattle. And we have no food. We have $350 cash. You can hover over these things and click on them. It'll update your journal. Let's see. 
We have a map. I'm not going to do every single little thing in this game. Uh, I'll do I'll do most of it. I'll do what I what I think people would would think is interesting. So, all right. So this is essentially just a point and click game. I'll go ahead and tell you the goal of this game is going to be to get to the Yukon as fast as possible. And I've played this game numerous times. There's a certain there's a certain way to play this game that should get you there as fast as possible. It doesn't always get you there as fast as possible. Sometimes it gets you there very late. It's just kind of a luck of the draw. This, this game is is uh, imperfect. I'll say that. All right, so let's see what this lady has to say. Howdy, stranger. You'll be needing a ticket to board any of these ships to Alaska. If I were you, I'd book first class passage to Dai. Okay, and Dai is where we will be going. But you can click through here and she'll say different things. Um, uh, let's see, yeah. Why, Dai is the gateway to the Klondike. It sits on the southern coast of Alaska Territory. Prettiest little town you ever did see. From there, it's an easy hike and boat ride to Dawson City and Gold Country. Okay, tell me more about the trip from Dai to Dawson City. From Dai, you take the scenic Chilkut Trail, the shortest route over the coastal mountains. On the other side, you'll launch a boat from Lake LaBerge and float down the Yukon River straight into Dawson. Okay, can I buy supplies in Dai? Of course, I recommend it highly. There's no sense lugging everything from Seattle on up to Alaska. Okay, thanks for the information. My pleasure. Remember, Dai is the place to be. All right, what are my other choices? Well, you could go to Skagway, which is just a stone's throw from Dai, but that town's nothing but a hangout for hooligans and con artists. Buy a ticket. There's a ticket office just up the street. Just tell the clerk that you want to go to Dai. Okay, nice talking to you. Goodbye. All right, we'll see what he has to say. Hello, friend. Uh, yeah, if you click, it'll stop their speech. Some, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have done that, but I get in the habit of doing it because I don't really want to listen to it. Uh, let's see. The best way to start your journey is the board ship Skagway. Skagway, where's that? Skagway is the premier port in southern Alaska. It's the best jumping off point to the Yukon gold fields. From there, it's an easy hike and boat ride to Dawson City. Okay, sounds the same as Dai. Tell me more about the trip from Skagway to Dawson City. From Skagway, you take the White Pass Trail through the mountains. It's not the shortest route, but it's the easiest. Once you're through the mountains, you just take a boat from Lake LaBerge down the Yukon River to Dawson. Yeah, and it is the longer trail. And it isn't, and it's true, it's not quite as, uh, it's not as, as hard as the, the, uh, trail out of Dai. Alright, can I buy supplies in Skagway? Naturally. The fine citizens of Skagway are dedicated to serving the needs of Stampeders such as yourself. You can buy whatever you need at very reasonable prices. Okay, thanks for the information. You're welcome. Remember, Skagway is the best way. Uh, what are my other choices? Your only other choice is Dai, but that's just a backward little outpost with nothing going for it. Skagway is where the action is. Okay, where can I buy a ticket? There's a ticket office downtown. Remember, be sure to book passage on a ship that's going to Skagway. Alright, nice talking to you. Alright, what do you have to say? Shop now, or be sorry later. Get all your Klondike supplies at Pioneer Outfitters. Alright, where is the Pioneer Outfitters? It's on the main street downtown. You can't miss it. We're open until 9 o'clock tonight. Okay. Why should I buy an outfit here in Seattle? Don't get excited and rush away unprepared. You're going to a country where grub is more valuable than gold and frequently can't be bought for any price. We can fit you out quicker and better than any store in or out of the Klondike. All right, so that's all we can do in this screen. So we're gonna head to downtown Seattle. 
All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, if you go into the Outfitters, then the guy behind the counter is gonna tell you that you don't have a partner. So we're gonna have to get a partner first. The partners are in the ticket office, but first we can talk to these people. Greetings, stranger. Welcome to Seattle. Who are you? My name is Clarence Berry. My wife and I have just returned from the Yukon with more than $100,000 in gold. All right. That's fantastic. How'd you do it? We just happened to be in the right place at the right time. What do you mean? I was tending bar up in 40 Mile. One day, an Austrian by the name of Anton Stander came in. Stander said he'd found a good claim, but he was flat broke and needed supplies. So what'd you do? I gave him some money and half of a claim of my own in exchange for half of his claim. In just one winter of hard work, I took $140,000 in gold out of that claim. All right, congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm headed to the Yukon. Do you have any advice? Well, I suppose there's two things you should know. First off, when we left Dawson, there was hardly any food up there. If I were you, I'd plan on hauling in an outfit that would last you at least a year. Okay, what's the other thing I should know? You must expect to be disappointed. You may prospect for years and never find a paying claim. Then again, you just may be lucky enough to strike it rich. Okay, should I buy an outfit here in Seattle or should I wait? If I were you, I'd buy it in Seattle. Things are cheaper here, plus you never know what you'll be able to find up north. All right, thanks for the advice. I made note of it. You're welcome. All right, goodbye. All right, what do you have to say? Hello, it's nice to make your acquaintance. Who are you? I'm Ethel Berry, Clarence's wife. Thanks to our luck in the Yukon, we are probably the two wealthiest people in Seattle. What are you going to do with all that money? The first thing we're going to do is buy me a diamond wedding ring. We were very poor when we married. We had money for a trip to Alaska or a wedding ring, but not both. Luckily, we decided to go to Alaska. How romantic. What else do you plan to do? Well, before we struck it rich, Clarence worked for long hours and short pay on a fruit farm in Fresno, California. I think we might go back and buy that farm. All right, I'm headed to the Yukon. Do you have any advice? I would say the most important thing is to find yourself a good partner. I don't think either Clarence or I could have made it alone. All right. All right, if you'll notice, most people that you talk to, or, well, these two and several other people in the game, you've got this line here, I'm headed to the Yukon. Do you have any advice? And if you'll notice, when I click on it, it's going to write something in my journal. That's because advice goes in your journal, and there's a way that you can use that advice later on to gain a little extra money, and I'll show you what I mean later on. All right, goodbye, and talk to this guy. Hello there. You must be another one of those stampeders. Now, he doesn't have any advice, so talking to him won't necessarily update your journal. Okay, why do you suppose there are so many folks headed to the Klondike? Well, in case you haven't noticed, the whole U.S. economy has been in a depression for some time now. People have hardly any money, and what little they do have, they've been squirreling away. So you think people are looking for easy money? That plus the prospect of adventure. Nobody's stopping to think that they don't know anything about gold mining, or that they're leaving their jobs and families behind. Everybody's got visions, or delusions, striking the rich. Okay, what's been happening in Seattle lately? It's been mass hysteria ever since news about the Klondike hit town. It seems like most every Seattle resident has the fever. Folks are leaving town as fast as they can. Like who, for example? We've got nobody to run the streetcars. I haven't seen a policeman in days. The newspaper's losing its reporters. Even the mayor up and quit. Anybody staying in town? Seems like the only people left in Seattle are the shopkeepers who are selling outfits to Sam Peters. All right. Okay. So, I'm at about 15 minutes here. I'm going to try to keep these videos short. Uh, 
I had considered doing the whole video or doing the whole game in one video, but I'd rather not do that if I don't have to. So I'm going to cut it here. And appreciate everybody watching. More to come.